I'm just so thankful to be a part of whatever it is that God wants to do for this house, for my generation, for this nation. I just know that I want to have my yes in that vote. Amen. I'm excited about the things that are to come for the kingdom of God. So thank you all for joining with me tonight. And we're going to get right into scripture. It's a familiar passage. It's 1 Samuel 17. We're going to kind of skip around through it. I had a few thoughts that I thought I was going to prepare for this message over the course of this last weekend and this last week. The Lord's kind of taken me in a different direction, but I'm just going to be obedient tonight and just give you what I have, what the Lord's placed on my heart, because I do believe that I have a word for someone in the house tonight if we'll have ears to hear, not because of who I am, but because I've spent some time with the Lord. Amen. And I'm thankful that when you draw closer to him, he's going to answer the prayers that we've been praying. And I believe that's going to happen for us tonight. So 1 Samuel 17 It's a familiar story of David and Goliath. There's 51 verses. I promise I won't read them all. I narrowed it down to 18. So (laughs) we're going to kind of be skipping around. I'll be filling it in a little bit of a narrative to help you get through all the verses here. But we're going to start, and we see that we have David and Goliath. And to set a background, there's two mountains that are meeting in a valley. And on this side of the mountain, we have the Philistines. On this side of the mountains, we have the Israelites. And there's a valley between them. That's the setting that we find ourselves in. And we pick up in verse 4. It says, and there went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him. So that just described to us what the enemy looked like. That was a picture of who they were facing. Facing. It was an intimidating appearance. It was a giant who was coming down into a valley dressed in war clothes, right? The Israelites could recognize him as he's stepping down into the valley. So let's skip down to verse 16. And the Philistine, meaning Goliath, drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. That tells us this is the giant that keeps on coming back, rearing his head to see what he could do. For 40 days, he taunted the people in that valley. He kept walking down there. And during this time, David was already away tending sheep. He wasn't at the camp quite yet. But then if we skip down to verse 33, David has arrived at the camp. He's talking to Saul. And David feels that it's his time to fight Goliath. And this is what happens in 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And when I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth, and when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that he hath defied the armies of the living God." David said, moreover, the Lord that hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. So now we just read that David was looked down upon. He was being talked down to as a youth. He didn't seem prepared for battle, but he began to remind himself of the victories that the Lord had helped him win before. And he got dressed for battle battle. He began putting on the armor. He started getting prepared because he made up in his mind, it's about time that I go face Goliath. Amen. So that we skip down to 45, we have the confrontation where he's going to meet Goliath. All he had maybe was a sling, but he also had the Lord. In 45, it says, then said David to the Philistine, thou comest with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into to mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thee head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild of the beast of the earth, and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands, and it came to pass, hallelujah, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and he took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in the forehead. Then the stone sunk into the forehead and he fell to the face of the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. 
Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for its word and for its anointing. God, I thank you for the word that you placed in my heart, God. And I ask that for the next few moments, Lord, that you will be my strength. Lord, that they will not hear my voice, but yours. That you will use me just as a willing vessel, God. I ask for you to have your way in this service. And whatever that may look like, I thank you for your word. And that it's still living and applies today. I thank you for your spirit that I feel beginning to help me even now. God, I thank you for what you're going to do. God, I'm claiming now victory in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for your people, for your protection and for what this word can do to our lives. Let us have ears to hear and hearts to receive. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. He's worthy tonight, amen, amen. So we just heard a very familiar story, one that a lot of us might have known, but I thought it was important tonight to read that and to revisit it because sometimes we need to be reminded of the truth of God. Sometimes it has to take us back to those simple moments, maybe a moment we've heard since we were in preschool. But when we begin to renew our mind and remind ourselves of what the truth of the scripture says, it's something to be excited about. So I come encouraged tonight with a word of encouragement for his people because I know what the book says. Amen. I'm excited and I felt impressed in my spirit to visit this passage of scripture. And God, I believe, put me here on assignment tonight. And this word has stirred in my spirit. He's beginning to been speaking to me and saying that people in this house could apply this word and it could change their life if they had an ear to hear it. And I'm thankful for that. So when I began to revisit this scripture, a pastor was talking this morning and he said that the word is a living word, that we can read something and we can read it six months later and it speaks to us a little bit differently. And that's what happened with the scripture for me. I knew the story. I understood about David and Goliath, but something about it this time was sticking out to me. God was saying, why don't you just stay there for a minute and hear what I have to say about it? And I'm thankful that I did because when I began to listen, God told me that it was about time that David got ready once again. And that's my title tonight, David Get Ready. David, get ready. David was a young man. We heard how Saul was talking to him when he met him, but I'm not just talking to those that are young in the house tonight. I feel like this is a word that applies to everyone in some way. If you're young, you can relate to David, but David was also seen as unqualified. David was almost seen as forgotten or overlooked. David was somebody who had been spending some time alone with the sheep and with the Lord. Am I describing anybody yet tonight? David's people were being attacked by the enemy. Has anybody's people been attacked by the enemy? Has anybody's family been attacked by the enemy? You're being fought by the enemy. But above all, David was a child of God. Is there any children of God in the house with me tonight? Amen. So that means this message applies to you. It's not just for the youth, but this is for David. I'm talking to you, David, and you, David, and you, David. God began to tell me there's going to be David's in the house tonight. And I'm thankful that David's in the house. So I'm going to tell you, David, get ready because we're going somewhere tonight. Amen. Amen. So God began to place in my spirit that it was a time to call David forward from the sheep. And I don't know if you can feel it naturally, but the seasons are changing today. I was thankful for the warm weather today. There was a season change, but I'm also thankful there's a difference in the spirit realm and I can feel that we're stepping into something new. And in this time where I see this change happening, I believe that God's calling some things forth and that God's calling some people forth. He's calling some Davids forth, people just like David, that you have won victories before. You've seen the goodness of God, but that you're about to walk with him in a new season and a new power and a new way for a new battle. Not because what he did for you in the past wasn't good, but because our best days are yet to come. Amen. Has anybody heard him calling your name like David? Do you feel like, surely I can't keep fighting the same giant that's appearing for 40 days now. I'm getting a little bit tired of revisiting the same giant. I'm getting a little bit tired of fighting this same battle. That's because he's trying to tell you, David, you're about to get ready. You're about to get ready. There's more to his presence. There's more. There's a new depth you can walk in. I'm going to start calling you away from that place of isolation and in front of the people because that's where the glory of God can be made manifest. There's a newness to his people if they choose to respond when he calls their name. Amen. Amen. We see in scripture that David had been alone with the Lord and the sheep and he had been claiming victory over situations in his life. But then David transitioned to a new place between a mountain and a valley. And David gets to that new place, but he doesn't seem quite ready yet. The people looked at David. They looked at his clothes. They looked at his age. And they said, surely not him. They thought if he was really going to battle, then I guess we should at least dress him. We've got to at least get him ready. He's not ready quite yet. He's not got the armor on quite yet. And God began to tell me, church, it's just about wartime. 
And my church needs to begin to dress themselves with the armor that I have for them to prepare for battle. We know that we're at war with the kingdom of darkness, that the warfare is different, but the tactics are coming in new ways. And for this new battle, when the enemy tries to present himself in a new way, God began to instruct me to get ready for battle, to prepare myself for battle. And he said, before you go out, you've got to make sure you've got your armor on. Right Before they could just send David into the valley to meet him, they began to dress him. They had to put some things on him. They had to begin to change his clothes, change his countenance. So a guy said, what is the armor of God? Well, we know in Ephesians 6, it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. It starts with the belt of truth. So the Lord says, put on a belt of truth. That tells me we have to walk in truth. We need to begin to clothe ourselves with what we know to be true. You have to hold on to the truth of God. You, have, you don't let go of his word. You don't let go of the promises. You cling to what you know to be true, and that is his word. And you renew your mind in it day in and day out. Then there's the breastplate of righteousness. That's the covering over your heart. That's living upright, making sure that we're deflecting those attacks at the guard of our heart. Then there's the shield of faith. We know that we operate by faith and not by sight. So when you get ready to go into battle, you can't be walking by natural vision to go see a giant. Because when he was coming down into that valley, I'm sure he did look big. I'm sure he did have that armor on. And they were afraid because they were seeing with natural vision what the enemy was in front of him. But when you begin to walk by a shield of faith, using your spiritual eyes to activate your faith, you're going to praise when you don't see it. You're going to shout before you know it's been done. You're going to walk around in victory because you know the battle's already been claimed. You're going to walk a little bit differently. You're going to stand a little bit taller because you're walking by faith not walking by sight. I'm going to choose to walk by faith, believing that it's going to be taken care of for me because it's not my battle to begin with, but the battle belongs to the Lord. Once we surrender the battle, we can step out in faith and say, I know that no matter what it looks like, no matter what the world tried to say, no matter what statistic they've tried to put in my face, no matter what they've spoken over my generation, my town, my family, my nation, I know that I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to begin to walk by faith, not by what the enemy would like for me to believe, not for what they want it to me to do, but for what God has told me, the truth of God, the faith of God, the power of God, that I can still walk in today. I'm thankful we can walk by faith. Is anybody going to walk by faith tonight? Hallelujah. Walk by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's our shield of faith. Then we have the helmet of salvation. I thank God for salvation in itself. Thank God for salvation. But the mind is a place the enemy tries to attack. He tries to fight the church. You've got to put on your helmet. You've got to begin to safeguard your mind. Put on the helmet that God has given you so that the mind games of the enemy, they're not going to stick anymore. Those darts can try to come to my mind, but it says as soon as you get that thought, you cast it out. I'm not going to give it a place to stay because my helmet's going to be protecting my mind. Amen. And the last thing we have is the sword of the spirit, which is the word. The word is our sword. We don't come with natural weapons. We don't come with the physical sword. David didn't have a sword in the battle, but we have the power of what is written in our word. We have to get to know his word. We have to ask for understanding, to get it down in our heart so that in that moment of the battle, we don't have time to look it up. We don't have time to type it in. You have to know the word and have it in your heart that way in the minute that you need it, you can call on it, you can speak it. Amen. So we have to desire to get his word rooted in our hearts once again. So all of those things begin to outline what the armor of God is. And the Lord began to remind me, it is time to put on the whole armor of God to walk. And it's a time to stand. Scripture tells us when you've done all you can do, just stand. If I'm standing in the armor, I know I'm protected. If I'm standing in the armor, I know that no matter what the battle looks like, no matter what the valley or the mountain may bring, I'm just going to stand and stand alone. Amen. God is looking for his next David that will be sensitive enough to go to the camp, that will be sensitive enough to put on the armor that is before him, and that is willing to stand and fight for what he believes in. And I feel like there's some in this house that might even be under attack or they might be sitting there and the enemy is still battling you, telling you, well, this one's not for you. This is not about your giant. You have a different situation. And I know that you can see a giant out in front of you, but it's the thing that keeps on coming back to you. Goliath came for 40 days to challenge the people. The Lord began to tell me there are people facing their own personal Goliath. It's been a rearing head, maybe even for more than 40 days. People have been dealing with giants for days, weeks, maybe even years, could even be generations. The people have been wondering, how long is this going to keep going on? 
How long can I stand on this mountain and wait for the attack? How long am I going to keep fighting the same fight, looking at the same issue over and over again? I feel like it's going to take me over. I feel like I can't fight the fight anymore. Your mind begins to tell you that when you're in the middle of a battle. It feels like this one might just be the one that takes me out. But God told me to get somebody's attention tonight and to tell them, David, get ready. It's about your time to fight. It's just about war time. It's just about time to step into the battlefield. It's just about time to dress yourself in your armor and to prepare yourself and to prepare your house because it's your time. But don't let that statement scare you because you know how the story ends. And if you hold on, I'm going to tell you how that story ends with us tonight. We know what happens with David and Goliath, but I believe the Lord beginning to say there's going to be victories for the people in this house tonight if they can hold on and stand on to this word. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. The Lord said it is time to raise up in authority and to recognize the dominion we can possess. We have dominion. That word means control, to reign over something. God has granted us access to claim control over situations, to reign over it, to rule over it. That means it's in my jurisdiction. It's in my God-given power to claim this battle for the Lord. We just have to recognize that we possess it because we already have it. For too long, we're letting the enemy walk down in front of us. For 40 days, they let the enemy walk in front on their terrain, but they didn't realize that that ground already belonged to the Lord, and this battle is not belonging to me, but it's his battle. So this terrain that I'm walking over, this place I have dominion over, the next time that I put my foot there, I'm going to step with a little bit more dominion when I get there. For the next time that my foot steps in that place in front of that giant, I know that he is going with me. I'm not coming in my own strength, but I have dominion from the Lord, not from my own power, not in anything that I could do, but because this is his battle and I have dominion over the enemy. Amen. Do we realize we have dominion? We have him. That's all we need. It's more than enough. The people didn't see David as having much, but he had the king of glory, the Lord of hosts who is mighty in battle on his side. If all I have is Jesus, I have more than enough to make it through the battle. I have more than enough to make it through the day. I have more than enough to overcome this situation. If all I have is Jesus, that's going to be enough for me. Amen. I'm thankful that all I have to have is Jesus. But when I spend time with him, I can understand the trueness of his identity. And it makes me walk a little bit different. We can walk around with a little bit more freedom. We would walk with more joy. We would walk with more peace with our head held high if we would just realize we were made for more. Amen. And God began to allow me to picture the Israelites camping out on the side of that mountain. And he said, you were made for more than sitting on the side of a mountain and letting the enemy walk in front of you, making you think that it's the enemy's turn to get to have the ball in his court, that it's on his terms that you get to play. That's not how this battle works. It's not on the enemy's terms any longer. I'm not going to keep sitting on the mountain and letting the enemy come to me, right? We weren't called to sit on a mountain. You were called to go to battle. And the battle doesn't scare us because the Lord began to remind me that as I go into battle, the train of his robe still fills the temple. I came to remind somebody he's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle and he never will. And his train of his robe fills the temple of all the victories that he's won for me, of all the victories he's won for my parents, of all the victories he's won for my grandparents, for my great-grandparents, and for my children and my children's children. For generations and generations, his train fills the temple with the victories that he has won for me. I'm thankful that before I even go into battle, I can begin to remind myself of the train. And when I begin to look at the train, I see the lion. When I look at the train, and I see the bear that tried to come at me when I was with the sheep. And I know that soon and very soon at the end of that train, there's about to be a Goliath added on to it because the battle belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The train fills the temple. I have confidence because the train fills the temple. Amen. Can I remind you that he's brought you from a place that you couldn't even save yourself from. And he's added that victory to his train. He adopted you in. He gave you victory before, and he will do it again. He's still a God that heals. He's still a God that delivers. He's still a God that saves. He's still a God that sets free. He's still a God of miracles. He's still the name above all names and the king above all kings. He's still the reason I can wake up in the morning knowing that I have peace. I don't know what you're facing, but I can promise you there's still hope for your situation because he still turns beauty from ashes. He still transforms mourning to dancing. He's still the one 
one that makes your trial triumphant, right? He's a way making God and he's worthy to be praised and he's worthy to be praised because he's never lost a battle. I said he's never lost a battle for me and I know he never will and I know that he never will because I have his word to stand on that his train still fills the temple with all of my victories. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that he has the victory. I'm thankful he has the victory. Amen. And he's preparing us for battle. I believe we've been experiencing this outpouring of the spirit. We felt it in our services. And with that spirit is coming a boldness to the body because it's time to confront some things. With the wave of the spirit that's been in this house, it's been in churches across this nation, it's coming healing and boldness is with the move. That's just what I felt the Lord impressing on my spirit. So to David, who's in the house tonight, David, you better get ready because it's just about time to go down to a valley and to face a giant because the boldness is on its way. Amen. The wind is on its way. The armor is getting prepared. We're getting ready for battle. And it's time for battle because we have played games with the enemy for way too long. We've let him parade himself down in front of us in a valley while we sit on the mountain watching and being afraid of what he could possibly do. There's danger in waiting after God says go. I know there's a season for waiting and there's a season to fight. But once you have been issued one of those calls, you need to begin to open your ears for what the Lord is trying to tell you because he'll lead you. But you have to be obedient to what he's calling you to do. And when he says go, you know that you're not going in your own force or your own might, but that he's gone before you. Amen. And when he says wait, you know that his shield is protecting you. So no matter what the command is, I just ask you have an ear to hear the command of God for your life tonight. Amen. Because disobeying or not having an ear to hear puts us in a place that we really can't afford to be. It puts us in a position where we're sitting playing patty cake with the enemy. And while we're sitting there playing tug of war, playing the games, letting him parade down in the valley, what we don't realize is we're giving the enemy an opportunity. We're giving him a chance to sit there while he plays chess with us and it's move and counter move, attack and counter attack. You feel like you're placing seeds of doubt in your mind as you're doing that. He's planting seeds of discord. He's slipping in a little lie here, a little lie there. The longer you let the battle go on, the more room you're given for him to talk to you. And before you know it, you've already invited him into your home. And then we act surprised while the attack comes. And then we wonder why we keep battling the same thing we're battling. But the enemy thinks that he's got you right where he wants you. But he's blind to the realness of the battle. Because the enemy didn't realize that tonight I was going to tell you that playtime's over. The games are over. Playing chess with the enemy has been going on for a little bit too long. It can't just be attack and then I feel free and then attack and then I feel free and I'm carrying the same thing the next week and there's a cycle that I wish I could get off of and it's a roller coaster ride that I'm not having fun on anymore. I don't want to live that way because revival stirs me up and the world knocks me down and we take our kids to youth camp and then the school tries to indoctrinate them and it's up and down, back and forth, but I don't want to play chess with the enemy any longer. Amen. I don't want to sit here and move pawn after pawn, play after play, attack, waiting on a counter attack. I'm here to say checkmate in the house of God. The game of chess is gone. I'm taking my pieces off the table. I'm going to remove myself from this situation. I'm not waiting on him to make a move. It's my turn to make a move. I'm about to step down into a valley and confront Goliath. He doesn't have to come to me on that 41st day because I'm going to be in the valley waiting for him so that when he gets there, he already knows, well, you got her on the wrong day because when our feet hit the ground in the morning, devil, you better be scared. When our grand grabs the microphone, devil, you better be scared for what She's about to open out of her mouth. When her hands begin to clap in worship, devil, you better be scared because she's getting a little bit free tonight. I'm not waiting on the enemy to attack me. I'm making my move on the enemy. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I said the announcement with us, the days of dress up are over. We're not fighting the same fight anymore. We're not just using the word Christian as a title to just say it. We're going to live it. It's not just a thing we do or a thing that we can be, but the time for games are behind us, and we're about to change our approach. The ball's back in my court. I realize the dominion and the power that I have, right? Not through my own strength, but for the Lord. For too long, we've been asking for the Lord to help us to get around our problems, help us get over the problems. The Lord told me, you've tried to get over it, You've tried to run from it. You've tried to push it. You've tried to walk around the thing. You've tried to tiptoe around your issues. And you have still dealt with the same mountain and the same giant for days, weeks, years, maybe even generations. 
But God told me to tell somebody that it's stop asking, Lord, can you help me get around this mountain? And instead, you're about to speak to the mountain. And you're going to confront the enemy head on. And instead of asking for God for the strength to climb the mountain another day, it's time we look at the mountain and we say, mountain, be thou removed. Instead of watching the giant come before us another day, it's time to get dressed for battle and say, today is the day that I'm going to slay my giant. Right? It's not a cycle. I'm getting off of the cycle. I've made up in my mind. I'm not going to circle around the same journey that I've been taking on for too long. I'm not going to fight the same battle I've been fighting all this time. I'm not going to keep encountering the same struggle because when I approach the enemy, he didn't realize that his fate was already sealed because God said that somebody has been dealing with a giant in their life, maybe fighting it for days or years, and that giant keeps rearing its head in front of you. But God said, you're about to get victory over your giant. And the way you're going to get victory is because tonight you're going to make up in your mind, you're not going to fight the giant anymore, but you're going to confront it one last time. And this time when I confront it, it's not going to be like other times. It's not going to be a meeting where I pass the fight and I ask for strength, but I made up in my mind that I'm ready and I'm going to pluck the root of it out of my life and it will not be able to rear its head against me again. Today's the day that I've said enough is enough. I'm drawing the line in the sand. I'm confronting the enemy and saying, I'm not sticking with this same fight any longer. I'm walking in true freedom. Amen. How do I know for sure that the head is not going to be reared back up again? Because the Lord told me I was to instruct somebody specifically tonight to raise up in boldness and authority that he has placed on your life to draw back your sword and to cut the head off of the giant that is standing in front of you. When you cut the head off of a giant, it signifies the ultimate victory where it cannot come back. It can't put itself against you again. It's completely severed off and cut out of your life. And God said, someone in the room has the power. You just have to believe you have the power to do it. I have given you the power to confront the enemy head on. And we do this by bearing the whole armor of God, by using what he has given us for his glory and understanding that it's not in our own might, but that when my weakness and my strength begins to run out, he begins to step in and fight for me. When we surrender our full body unto what the kingdom of God has for us, he will use us as a warrior for his kingdom. And I know that I talked about the armor of God earlier and I broke down the different components of it, but the Lord began to take it even further for me. And he said, don't just tell them to put the armor on, but you remind them to use their whole body. So the next time you find yourself in a battle, when you begin to clap your hands, you begin to wage war on the enemy. When you begin to open your mouth, you begin to do a shout of praise and the enemy knows he has to retreat. When you begin to march your feet, you begin to claim that every place that you put your foot is territory claimed for the kingdom of God. Begin to use your body as a weapon for the Lord. And the scripture tells us that the God of peace will crush Satan under their feet. So recognize that when you put the full armor of God on, you're allowing your body to be used as an instrument of war. Your praise is a weapon. Your shout is a weapon. When you begin to dance before the Lord, it's a weapon. When you clap your hands, it's a weapon. When you speak, the words that are coming out of your mouth can sever the head of the giant in front of you. We have power with our body. So begin to use it for his glory. Amen. Don't let the enemy discredit you into thinking that you can't do it because the Bible tells us that he always uses who he needs regardless of what the enemy has tried to tell them. Amen. We can look at David in this story. He said, I'm just David. I'm overlooked by my brothers. We can look at Timothy. I'm just Timothy. I'm just a young man. I'm just a Paul, just a man with a stutter, right? God has always called imperfect people because it begins to show his power at a greater level. Don't wait till you think you have it figured out to go to the battle, right? You'll never have it all the way figured out. You surrender to God and he's gonna fight the battle for you. So we can't disqualify ourselves. If you are feeling the tug of the Lord, it doesn't mean that you're the most fluent and eloquent speaker you can think of. It doesn't mean you have the newest theory supported by a fancy degree. But if God tells you where to go, that means he has prepared a way for you to get there. You might say, well, I can't sing. What if I sing off tune? But what if when you open your mouth full of worship, the choir of heaven joins behind you? Well, I can't speak in front of anybody. I don't know proper English. But what if the next time you open your mouth, English isn't even what comes out, but the voice of God begins to speak through you in another language, begins to speak through you in another tongue. Amen. God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. Amen. It doesn't matter what you think you have in your toolbox. You have access to God's gifts. You have access that in that moment, he will meet you there and he will do a new thing in you. He has given you the power to win this fight. Amen. Could we come to the music tonight, please? 
And along that note, a lot, I know this might not be a fancy message. It might be a scripture we probably all heard before. It didn't have fancy theology in it, but I just came to tell you what I really feel the Lord placed on my heart. And I know that he wanted me to tell somebody, David, it's time to get ready. You have the ability. You are being called out of a place to confront the thing and you will do it boldly and you will give all glory and honor to God. It is time we identify the root of the giant that's in front of us. We call the giant by name. We speak to it and we tell it to fall. And that's the end of it. It doesn't have to be a battle. I don't have to keep facing this. So whatever the giant is in your life, whatever situation you find yourself in that keeps putting itself in front of you, I don't know what it may look like to you, but I know there's hope that you're going to have the victory over it. Amen. It could be a giant of depression. It could be a giant of anxiety, the giant of fear, the giant of envy, a giant of regret, the giant of addiction, the giant that's having its way in your family. It's having its way in your marriage, having its way in your finances. I don't know what your giant looks like, but I know that your giant can fall tonight if you want it to fall. It can be as simple as standing in obedience, making up in your mind. I'm not just going to be a part of the army. I'm not just going to be a bystander, but it's my time to fight. It's my time to clothe myself and to step out and say, I'm going to take care of this once and for all. For this fight, for this time, he has called and he has made you able to handle it. He called you for this giant, for this purpose, for this season. I know it may look big. I know it may look decked out in all the world's armor. It may have been presenting itself in front of you for a long time, but you have the right to stand up to it. You have the authority to stand against it. You're more than enough to take care of your Goliath. You're more than enough because it's not in your own strength, but through the Lord that your victory is going to come. Amen. So will you stand with me across the house tonight? I'm thankful we can have victory over every situation regardless of what it looks like. I know that Goliath looked big in the valley and I know that we're facing real situations, real situations and real giants in our own lives. But don't look with your natural eyes at what the enemy has tried to tell you is ahead of you. Begin to activate your eyes of faith. Begin to say, I'm gonna go to the valley one last time, but this time it's gonna be different because I'm coming in dominion, I'm coming in power, and I'm coming with the armies of heaven behind me. I'm not fighting this fight alone. It's never gonna be in my own strength, but that I have the Lord of hosts. I have the King of Kings on my side. And remember, I told you that as long as I've got Jesus, I've got more than enough for me. Amen. As long as we realize we have more than enough. So I wanna make an altar call tonight. And I believe that tonight at these altars, someone is gonna to decide to stand up, to confront the enemy one last time. If you knew this could be your one last time, this was a time you're coming free. You're getting up and you're never going back. From this day forward, my life's gonna look a little bit differently. It's time for a turnaround. It's time for victory in the battle. It's time to walk into a valley, recognizing who you are and saying, I don't deserve to live like this any longer. I'm not gonna set myself on the mountain any longer and let him come pray himself in front of me. But but I'm going to confront the thing. And today I'm getting the root. Today I'm going after the head. I'm telling you, he's not going to come back for me any longer. It's not how long can I be free this time? God, I hope this lasts. God, I want revival to stay. Don't let it go. No, I'm telling you, it's not going to go. I'm not going to let it go. I'm not going to let go of the promise that God has given me. I'm going to stand in authority and say, I'm making my way off the mountain. I'm getting to step down into a valley. And devil, you should be scared. Devil, you should recognize that I've finally realized the power that I have and the dominion that I have and it's enough for me and it's enough for the battle it's enough for the war we're called and equipped for this time amen if this could be the last time I would want to go if I knew that I had the strength and you do have the strength so as you come tonight let every step that you take to the front of this building be a step that you're claiming for territory for the Lord and new authority you're going to walk so as we begin to come tonight, I ask that as you walk to this altar, make up in your mind at your seat with every step that I take, I'm climbing off the mountain. I'm beginning to walk down into a valley. I'm putting on my armor. I'm gonna to start to renew my mind of the battles that he's already won for me. I remember when he saved me when I was lost beyond belief. I remember when he healed me when I was sick in my body. I remember when he provided and he met every need that I've ever had. I remember when he was faithful to my family. I remember when he did it for others and I know he can do it for me. Remind yourself of the train of his robe that fills this temple.
people and walk to these altars tonight. Confront your giant for the last time and watch it fall. Amen. Watch the giants begin to fall. He's worthy to be praised tonight. I ask you to come. I want to pray with you. We're going to take care of this giant tonight. We're going to get this problem out of the way. I'm not fighting it any longer. I'm rising up in power. I'm rising up in dominion. And right now, my giant's about to fall. Is anybody ready to be a giant slayer? Is anybody ready to speak to the mountain and see it removed? I know that he's able and he's given us the power. And I know there are situations in the house. The Lord is telling me this is for somebody. Don't let this get you scared again. Don't let it put you back up on the mountain. You come tonight. You face it. And you take care of it once and for all. Because it's not coming back. It's got no hold on me anymore. It's not a cycle anymore. Tonight the cycle ends. And I'm thankful for that. So come tonight. Hallelujah. Everybody, we want to say thank you for watching today. We pray that this message blessed you. And if it did, please feel free to subscribe. Stay up to date with what we're doing here, as well as follow us on our other social media platforms. Help us reach more people across this world for Christ. We love you all. We pray that you have a blessed day. And we pray that we see you again soon. God bless.